Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pod. Bringing in the new year with KC and the Sunshine Band on the next Mad Pod. KC and the Sunshine Band, the first act to score three number one singles since the Beatles. That is some accomplishment. Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, it, it's just, you know, I came from a label that had a lot of one-hit wonders. So when we had, a, after we had our second number one, it was, you know, it was like, I, I guess I broke that mold. Then we did the third one that was like really broken. So... It was exciting for us, you know, that it, it just kept popping out like that. Don't get mad. Get media. Mad. Pop. Originally formed in Hialeah, Florida, and rejoining us live coast to coast from Miami, singer, songwriter, and founding member of the legendary disco sensation Casey and the Sunshine Band, Harry Wayne Casey. Welcome back, Harry. A pleasure speaking with you once again. Thank you. Same here. KC and the Sunshine Band appearing at the Paragon Casino, Marksville, Louisiana, in Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Atlantic City Hilton, in Hollywood, Florida for the Super Bowl event Beachfront, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil at Canasau, and in Sao Paulo at Via Funchal. Harry, it must be a nice feeling to know your music has never gone out of style. Are you at all surprised there's still this worldwide interest in both you and the band? Um, you know, it's fun music, it, and you know, it, it makes people feel good and happy. So, I mean, uh, I don't know if I'm surprised. I mean, I, I would hope my music would have lasted, you know, past 1975, and it did. So, you know, it's been, it's been really great and glad to see that it still, you know, brings happiness to people. And for constantly updated news and information, your most inclusive website is heykcsb.com. Besides a nonstop SRO touring schedule, tell us about your book and CD called In a Mellow Mood, a collection of 17 mid-tempo to slow songs from different albums. Uh, yeah, um, actually I was on my iTunes and I decided to go through my catalog and just kind of put uh, a little playlist together and it was all like of the, the mid-tempo stuff from all the different albums, not all of them, but quite a few of them. And I kind of enjoyed it. I thought, you know what, I, I should put this out. So uh, that's kind of how it came together. Casey, let's look back at your incredible roster of Billboard hits. Firstly, how did you, original members bassist Richard Finch, the late guitarist Jerome Smith, Furman Coitasolo on congas, drummer Robert Johnson, and horn section Ronnie Smith, Denville Liptro, James Weaver, and Charles Wilson get together in 1973 Miami? Well, we were all studio musicians at TK, and... Um... I originally, you know, put put a band together that didn't include those guys. And uh, on the second record that we were doing, um, they came in to play on the record, and it started making some noise. And, you know, I just, uh, you know, I had worked with them, you know, before as another group in Miami. And uh, we were just friends. So, you know, it was just natural for me to ask them to come along for the ride. We must mention original guitarist Jerome Smith, died in a construction accident July 28, 2000, at age 47. What happened, Casey? Um, I'm not sure. He was working uh, on a construction site and was, was run over by a tractor or something. What a tragedy. Yeah, and Robert Johnson passed away like 10 years before that. So, Now, your self-entitled TK debut album yielded three singles, beginning with Get Down Tonight, issued July 12, 1975, reaching number one for one week, that's the way I like it. Released October 25th, peaking at number one for two weeks, and Boogie Shoes, a number 35 pop hit, originally pressed as the B flip of Shake 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 Your Booty, and re-released on February 11th, 1978, due to its inclusion in the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack on RSO. Casey, whose idea was it to speed up the guitar on Get Down Tonight? What a unique high energy sound! It was Rick's idea. Um... We were just messing around with different things, and we thought, let's slow the tape down and put the guitar on, and then when we played it back, it was just amazing, so we kept it in there. Now, last time you were with us, I remember you telling me the working title for Get Down Tonight was What You Want Is What You'll Get. Did it take a long time to write? Um, no, I mean, I, whenever I, I go in the studio and I'm working on a song, it, it, I just, you know, punch out a bunch of words that's in my head at the moment or whatever, and that, and, uh, when I did that first demo, it just didn't sound right, so I went back in and, and rewrote it. It didn't, it didn't take a whole lot of time. Now, the Sound of Sunshine LP contains Shotgun Shuffle, billed as by the Sunshine Band, which reached number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 Labor Day weekend, September 9, 1975, and 
Queen of Clubs from Do It Good, charting at number 66 on March 13, 1976, was first issued back in 1974. Casey, you must feel proud when artists such as Rob Zombie remade I'm Your Boogeyman and the Spin Doctors did That's the Way I Like It. There was a remake of Please Don't Go by two different artists in Europe, wasn't there? Yes, and they both went to number one. It was pretty amazing. Casey and the Sunshine Band, the first act to score three number one singles since the Beatles. That is some accomplishment. Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, it, it's just, you know, I came from a label that had a lot of one-hit wonders. So when we had, a, after we had our second number one, it was, you know, it was like, I, I guess I broke that mold. Then we did the third one, it was like really broken. So it was exciting for us, you know, that, that it just kept popping out like popping that. Out like that. <laughs> Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pop. Live coast to coast from Miami, Florida, with singer, songwriter, and founding member of the legendary disco sensation Casey and the Sunshine Band, Harry Wayne Casey joins us. Casey, the roster of hits continued with I Like to Do It, peaking at number 37, December 4th, 1976, and a rare double sided 45 RPM single, I'm Your Boogeyman debuting at number one, February 26, 1977, back with the B-Flip Wrap Your Arms Around Me, issued December 3rd, reaching number 48. Casey, if you hadn't met Rick Finch, would there have been a KC in the Sunshine Band? Did you need a songwriting partner at that time? No, there, there was already, already a KC in the Sunshine Band before I met Rick Finch. I did a whole, the whole album, do it, uh, half of the album, Do It Good, had already been created. So, um, there was... There, Casey the Sunshine Band really came before everybody. I never knew you were in an auto accident that left you in a wheelchair for a time. Uh, for a little bit, yeah. Um, I, was, I, I was hit head on at an intersection, and uh, it uh, messed me up pretty bad. Now, Keep It Coming, Love, issued July 30th, 1977, stalled at number two for three straight weeks, and was the fifth consecutive single from the LP Part 3, followed by Boogie Shoes, which we already mentioned. Casey, who's in the Sunshine Band these days? Um, it's, it's, uh, there's 15 of us on stage right now, and it's uh, uh, Steve Lashley on bass, Jeffrey Rees on guitar, Jody Hill on drums, um, Rusty Hamilton on keyboards, Nick Marinovich on keyboards, um, there's Maria De Crescenzo on vocals, Charlotte uh, McKinnon on vocals, there's John Reed on trumpet, uh, Rick Benedetto on trumpet, um, Kenny Hamilton on saxophone, and Tim Pitchford on trombone, and Fermin Gort solo on percussion, and then myself, and the, the two dancers, Kenitha, Kenitha Morris from Miami, and Mickey Up and out like that. that. Don't get mad. Get media. Mad Pod. Live coast to coast from the Sunshine State with singer, songwriter, and founding member of the legendary disco sensation Casey and the Sunshine Band, Harry Wayne Casey joins us. Casey, on May 13, 1978, it's the same old song from the LP Who Do You Love, peaked at number 35 pop, remaking the Four Tops 1965 classic, followed by Do You Feel All Right?, which reached number 63 on October 7th. Casey, how did you get that initial job at TK boxing up records? I, I, I just was hanging out, and instead of just sitting around, I just started doing things. So, uh, um, you know, I, I loved collecting records, so that's kind of why I was there. They had this huge upstairs loft that had uh, all these old records in it. So I, I asked if I could go through them, and at the same time, I just started boxing them up. And I just, I always did... Anything to keep myself busy. I just didn't want to be known, you know, as just somebody just hanging out and, you know, just hanging around and doing nothing there. So whenever they needed any help doing anything, I pitched in. Do You Want to Go Party from the album of the same name, rounded out at number 50 on the Billboard Hot 100, May 19, 1979, followed by your last single with TK, the monster slow jam Please Don't Go, peaking again at number one, August 25th, 1979. A rather rare ballad for such a high-energy group. This song really showcased the versatility of the Sunshine Band, didn't it? Yeah, and I, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and, you know, luckily we, we did the right thing. And, you know, between that and I Bet You Didn't Know That, who was written by Frederick Knight, that was a huge, that was the B-side of Please Don't Go, and it was number one on, on all the R&B charts. So we kind of had a back-to-back -back number one record there with Please Don't Go, and I bet you didn't know that. 
Casey, this is interesting. Your band was always labeled a disco band only because of the era you found yourself in, but you never thought of the band as disco. It was actually R&B, wasn't it? Yes, yes. I mean, it, you know, we created the sound before, you know, they changed the, the name of the, the music to disco music in the, in the, the you know, late 70s. So I never did consider us, you know, actually, part, although we were the forerunners of that movement and everything, I never, you know, considered us as a disco band, no. You actually retired between 1985 and 1991 and partied your butt off, even to the point of over-partying. You told us you got really heavy into drugs and alcohol. You thought you were done with the music business forever. Harry, what brought you back? I just started missing it. I just started realizing that... Uh, I wasn't doing what I really, you know, enjoyed doing, and that was performing and, you know, you know, playing music and that sort of thing. And, you know, it took me, a, you know, a while to realize that. My friends kept telling me all those years, you know, why aren't you back out there? I said, I just don't want to do it. And then I, the more they kept mentioning it, the more I realized that uh, I, I missed doing it. So I got my act together and went back out on the road, up and out like that. Don't get mad. Get media. Mad pod. Live coast-to-coast coast from the Sunshine State with singer, songwriter, and founding member of the legendary disco sensation Casey and the Sunshine Band, Harry Wayne Casey rejoins us. Casey, one of the best ballads to come out of the late 1970s was your duet rendition of the 1965 Barbara Mason classic, Yes, I'm Ready, with Terry Desario hitting number one for two weeks adult contemporary, two weeks at number two pop, November 17, 1979, followed by Dancing in the Streets from June 28, 1980, topping out at number 66. Casey, how did you meet and get involved with Terry? Uh, I had known Terry uh, all my life. We grew up together. We went to school together. And uh, I would always kind of kept track of her career after we graduated high school and stuff. And uh, I noticed that she had this single out called Ain't Nothing Gonna Keep Me From You by the Bee Gees. And... Um, I got in touch with her and asked her what she was doing, and uh, just one thing led to another, and I met with the record company, and they wanted me to do her next album, and uh, so in part of the song selection, you know, uh, I wanted to do, you know, a, a duet with her and of, of an old classic, and uh, Yes, I'm Ready was one, one the song that I picked. Now, you left TK Records and signed with Epic releasing The Painter, but Epic Records didn't pick up where TK Records left off. Right. What was the problem, Harry? Weren't they rhythm savvy? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure what happened. I mean, I know, it, I think at the time they were really concentrating on Michael Jackson's career, and I think a lot of effort went into promoting you know, him as an artist, and uh, everybody else was kind of left in the dust. And uh, it, just, it just didn't work out between us. Harry, did signing with Neil Bogart's Casablanca imprint give you as much creative freedom as with TK? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I really only did the one record with them. I never did really sign with, with Casablanca except for that one album, and I pretty much had you know creative control over the whole project. While on I mean, Neil Bogart was an amazing man. He really was. Yeah. While on tour in 1976, the Jackson 5 were your headliners, followed by the Commodores. What a bill that was, Harry. It was. It was a lot of fun. It was in, uh, we did quite a few shows with the Jackson 5 and the Commodores. Let me ask you, at one time you recorded all your shows. Were you looking to put out a live album down the road, Harry? Well, no. I mean, it's always common that a lot of artists record their shows and they go back and listen to them, you know, the next day or the, that night after the show and... Uh, make any corrections or talk about any mistakes or, or things that were going on. So, uh, no, we just always recorded the shows. Your opinion... They, they weren't of high quality, but they were always recorded. Your opinion would certainly count here. At one point, there was a terrible backlash against disco music. At stadiums, they were breaking and burning records of disco artists. Why do you think there was such a mindset, Harry? Um, I guess it was just some frustrated musicians that felt they didn't fit in anymore. Um... I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it would, you know, the, the guy, 